So about two and a half years ago, Saba dropped the album Care For Me. And today, he officially released two new tracks. First one being Mrs. Whoever, and the second one being Something in the Water featuring Denzel Curry. The first track, Mrs. Whoever, was kind of teased for a little bit. So apparently this video had been unlisted on YouTube for about two months, and Sabo had this sort of plan to get people to listen to it or find it. It was basically a scavenger hunt. So what had happened was he went on Twitter and tweeted out a phone number for fans to sign up and just kind of talk to him. From that, he then linked his website, sabopivot.com. On the website, there was a image of a telephone, like old school, like corded telephone. And you kind of had to enter a code to get into the website or to the song, Mrs. Whoever. That's already done and happened, that happened yesterday. But today he officially released it to the public. And let's go bar for bar and break down these lyrics. So he starts off his first verse with, Way I see it, I'm top 10. Never let a motherfucker try me now. Nah. I'm feeling the pressures, I'm like a diamond, y'all. My family's straight, I'm getting what I need all. This is pretty straightforward. He's basically saying, yo, I am top 10. This is always just like a braggadocious thing. Like a lot of other rappers do this. But it's always a good mindset to have when you're in the rap game because you want to be top 10. You want to be revered as one of the greats. So him saying that isn't necessarily saying that he is actually top 10, but he is kind of striving for that or that's what he thinks of himself in the rap game. I'm feeling the pressures, I'm like a diamond doll. Diamonds are created from pressure that is put on coal over many years. So he's basically saying over the years, all the pressure that he has been through and all the pressure that has been put on him has created a diamond. So he is basically saying, yo, I am a diamond now. But I mean, it could also just be like, yo, I was a diamond in the past too, but to say a reminder, I am a diamond. My family's trying to get what I need. So a lot of rappers, when they make it, they want to first provide for their family or their friends but they don't necessarily really pay as much attention to themselves. At least that's like the more wholesome <laughs> thought process of it. I don't know how many rappers actually think that way and actually act on it like that, but most of the time rappers are like, yeah, I'm gonna get my mom's a house, buy a new car, like, you know, the usual stuff. So he had that thought in mind, but now it's at the point where his family's straight. He can do whatever he wants. And this isn't necessarily a monetary thing. Like he can probably just go and get most of what he needs. He's a well-known rapper, so he's got the ability to get most of what he needs. However, another way to think of it is kind of a more mental or spiritual side to it. So he's like, my family's good. I don't have to worry about that no more. Let me focus on myself. And that's the thing that a lot of people f don't really focus on, especially for people in the music industry. They need to, like, I mean, they've been talking about it for a while. Like, they need to have therapy sponsored by these labels because there's just so much stuff. Like, especially now, you're constantly being bombarded with social media posts talking about your music or you, and you're just like, you don't even know me. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? He's getting what he needs in the sense of, like, he's focusing on his mental health. Also, considering that this was written right around the time quarantine was starting, and I think it probably was finished a little bit closer towards the end of quarantine, or not the end of quarantine, but within the last couple months, that could also just be like, cool, my family is safe, now let me focus on me and what I'm going to be doing in this time. 10,000 hours I put the time into it, all the emotions that I felt, you hate me, then you hate on yourself, hand around a waist like I'm like a belt. 10,000 hours is always the set time for someone to perfect something. So in this case, I believe I was talking about the 10,000 hours it takes to become a good rapper, but it does make sense. If you spend 10,000 hours to work on something, you're gonna get good at it. It could also just be that he's been, if we're going with the whole mental health aspect, he spent 10,000 hours focusing on himself and now he's good. I don't think that's what he's really going for with this track in particular though. You hate me, then you hate on yourself. So a lot of times people just be hating online. What he's saying here is like, yo, if you have the time to hate on someone else, you're probably running from the hatred that you have for yourself, if that makes sense. To 
hate on someone, you have to have a good reason. And a lot of times it's kind of envy. <laughs> so you're hating on someone because you don't have what they have or that they are in a better place than you are. So you're just like, man, they ain't, they ain't even that good. I could do that, but I won't because I hate myself. Something like that. But I mean, obviously it's not going to be that direct. It's going to be more of like a subdued sort of thing in the back of your mind that you're like, you don't really recognize it until you really start to look at it. Well, it's so hard to get, keep it anonymous because once the public figures it out, the targets ain't hard to hit. Keeping wealth anonymous, I mean, it makes sense. There are people that you may know who you may not have interacted with too much in the past, but they are aware of you and what you're doing. But once you start getting money, they just kind of pop up back into your life. They're like, hey, bro, what's, what's good? You got some money for me? I'm, I'm struggling. I need those new J's. Can you give me a car? Like stuff like that. Like he wants to keep himself more subdued. But it's also a good way to do it because then it keeps you kind of humble. You're not just flashing all your money at all times. It also could just be like that dude who won the lottery and wore a scream mask because he doesn't want no one to find out that he had all that money. Because once the public figures out, targets ain't hard to hit. I mean, it's straightforward. Like, yo, once they find out, they're going to target you. But because he says once the public figures out, so it could be once a public figure is out, they are a target. Like, a public figure. Like, anyone who's just kind of big. Like, not necessarily a target to kill them, but a target for paparazzi and just attention in general. Which, again, kind of goes back into the mental health thing. Like, that is very tiring, <laughs> you could say. It's very mentally exhausting to have to deal with people always up in your face. Like, asking you all these questions all the time. So proceed with caution, they'll be supporting for things your fortune can get. To be from Austin, you see he God sent to be so fortunate. So proceed with caution in general. <laughs> like, monitor your surroundings. It's also, again, talking about those people who only come after you once you have money. They're like, yo, they're going to only support the things that your money can get them. You know, people just kind of hang around other people with money just to kind of get the table scraps essentially this then goes into the chorus mrs mr whoever i pray all the time all the same sadly i see things i thought would change all the time all the same i don't want shit i just called to say how's your day can't complain my phone's open to you all today work two ways or mrs mr whoever i kind of thought of as like he's praying to god I don't know if there's another reason or meaning to it, though. Just, I, that seems the most plausible, but it could also just very well be a misdirect. And he's actually referencing something else entirely. But if we're going with that, all the time, all the same, he's always praying constantly and always praying for the same things. And then, sadly, he sees things that he thought would change. Whether that be in the hood or just in the world in general. Given the time... This is probably written or fully done and stuff. He could be talking about the increase in attention to police brutality, let's say. And it's also kind of like a, like him praying is like a phone call. So he's like, he's always on the phone talking to whoever he's praying to. And he's like, yeah, I, I don't really want anything. I just want to say, how's your day? And that could just be him talking to whatever he's praying to or to people in general really my phone open to you all today works two ways uh so two ways just straightforward is a two-way street you if you're going to talk to someone you're going to like you have to talk and ask questions like you can't just have a one-way conversation because that's kind of boring especially given what he's saying he's like how's your day like you he wants to expand on things like that my phone open to you like my phone's always ready to i'm always available to talk to you which then goes into a second verse i'm tired of motherfuckers hitting me up like you never hit me up well that's what's up in the song in the video you kind of hear him pick up the phone after a couple rings and then he puts it back down the people that are saying you never hit me up are the people that he's just not really trying to have in his life as much these are also the people who will take advantage of the money that you have come into so it's like he's trying to not isolate himself, but keep those people 
a little bit away. Like he's trying to keep him just at a distance from him. And then him hanging up is like, you know, like, just leave me alone. Because <laughs> actually the first time I listened to it, I didn't really hear the, or I didn't watch the video. I heard it and I didn't hear him hanging up. It kind of sounded like when he, or when they were saying that, it was like him calling them. So it rang a couple times and then it just hung up. So it's almost like, well, you were never there for me when I called you. Like the phone kept ringing. That could also play into this too. Cause it's like, like people just, you know, people just come out of nowhere. They're like, oh, you got money now. Let me see what's up. How you doing? And then you're just like, where the hell have you been? Like, why are you here now? Why weren't you here when I was like in the dirt? People be focused upon the accolades. People you still call your friends get to acting up. It's sad as fuck, never satisfied. Uh, people focus on accolades, again. <laughs> people are just very focused on what you're doing and what you've achieved. People you call your friends get to acting up. So this is a little bit of a different take because this isn't necessarily the people that just come up out of nowhere. These are the people that have been around you for some time. So these are people that you call your friends, but they start wilding out once you start, once you got money, you know? Which also could be those people that show up out of nowhere too, I guess, but you know, when you're starting up, you want to have people around you because you're like, you want that support. But once you have what you're trying to achieve, they want something in return rather than just being happy for you. And that's fine. Like, I get it. But I don't think that's those are the people he's talking to here. I think he's talking to the people who are just very greedy. <laughs> They're like, man, I was with you back in the day. You got to support me now. Where's my roly? Like, yo, you... You didn't really do that much. You were just saying, I got bars. People that I looked up to, I'm passing by, doing everything I said I would be doing. You never hear a dude say that Saba lied. So basically he's at the level where he's meeting and interacting with the people that he's looked up to, kind of going through the rap game. And he's just kind of passing them by rather than trying to work with them. That could be for a multitude of reasons, so I can't really pick one particular option. But given the theming of this song, it's probably in relation to money. Since the pacifier in the crib, I was mad inspired as a kid. No, she didn't want me back then, now she Caroline in a ditch. Since the pacifier in the crib is him just saying, since way back in the day, since I was a baby, since I was a child, I've always been mad inspired. She didn't want me back then, now she Caroline in a ditch. This is in direct relation to the outcast song Roses, in which Caroline is in a ditch. Or they're going to throw her in a ditch. Took it as a lesson we don't want to rush in. Took her to a restaurant, now she undressing. I said it would happen, that was manifesting, and then and she threw it at me like a penny to a freshman. Ah. This is kind of him not necessarily talking to the woman that he that is in a ditch now, but just someone in general. We, as in him and the person he's involved with. Don't want to rush into anything. Cool. You don't want to rush into a relationship. I don't blame you. Took her to a restaurant. Now she's undressing. They went out a few times, probably, or one time, and now they back at the house. I said it would happen. That was manifesting. This kind of ties back into the um, since the pacifier in the crib. I was mad inspired as a kid line, or even the you never heard them say Saba lies. Like he's always going to do what he wants to do or whatever he says he's gonna do. Like he was manifesting this. <laughs> Threw it at me like a penny to a freshman. Her throwing stuff is pretty straightforward. I don't need to elaborate on that. But <laughs> the penny to a freshman line, if you have taken any sports in school, pennies are like these kind of dingy jersey sort of things that you're supposed to wear in team sports or like in PE and stuff. And they're just kind of gross, so the freshman has to wear them. <laughs> this then goes back into the chorus, which is the same as before. Overall, I was very excited for the song, and I am very pleased with the song. The video actually makes it a lot better, because it's just Saba walking through a garden almost, and it just feels very peaceful. and. That's kind of where I feel Saba is now. He's at peace with what he's doing. Yes, it's been a very long time since we've gotten a proper album from him, 
I know we had the Pivot Gang album, I believe, last year, but it's been two and a half years since ta uh, Care For Me. So people have been waiting. I've been waiting, especially because they announced that they'd be doing Ghetto Sage, which is him, Smino, and No Name. But nothing really came out of that either, except for the track Hagen Dazs, I believe. Regardless, this was a really dope track. Also check out Something in the Water, because, I mean, Denzel Curry is always a fun listen. But yeah, I think this track overall is really just focusing on him, where he is currently, and just kind of the stuff that happened after Care For Me. Because Care For Me was a very good project that brought a lot of attention to Saba. And with that attention brings a lot of negativity and negative attention, which he is addressing here with the lines talking about keeping himself anonymous or friends acting up, stuff like that. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything, because I am sure I did. And let me know if you want me to do a breakdown for something in the water as well. Also, like and subscribe if you want to see more breakdowns and content like this. Thank you for watching and please stay safe out there.